Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be testing and reviewing the Geetech Alcade $99 resin 3D printer. I want to say thanks to Geetech for sending this out for the purpose of this review. This printer is available on their website for $99. It's also available on Amazon and there are bundles available if you'd like to purchase their light curing box or wash and cure station at the same time. So over at Keytech's website, real quick, let's take a look at its technical specifications. It's $99, there's a $5 new customer coupon, and they have bundles with their wash and cure stations and UV light boxes and things like that. And here you can see some of the specifications of it, 1.5 seconds per layer, printing accuracy of 0.051 millimeters, has a 3.5 inch touch screen, at the front for you to control the printer and the light curing LCD is 6.08 inches and one year warranty it's got a, a linear a z-axis linear guide rail matrix uh, a matrix UV light source quick FEP replacement if you've ever replaced FEP you'll know what a chore that is here are some models that have come off it. Here's what's in the box, and here are the specs themselves. You can pause it here and take a look at these specs if you're interested in them. When you open the box, and it does come well packed, but when you open it, you'll get the printer itself. You get the vat, the, the resin goes in. You get the print head. You get the UV protective cover. You get a plastic scraper, a little Allen key, a USB stick that has the manual, instructions, videos, some test prints, the slicer called Cheetu Box, and other things as well. And they also sent me a bottle of their water washable black resin as well. And of course, you get a power supply. So, I'm going to put all this together. And to do that, it's very simple. You just put the, the vat on top of the printer. You tighten down the screws. You put the print head, you loosen this, you put the print head there, you tighten that down, and you put the cover on, and you're assembled. Okay, so I know you want to pour resin in and start printing, but before we can do that, we have to level the head. And that's really very easy to do on this printer. First thing we want to do is these four screws, two on each side, we want to make sure they're loose using the little Allen that came with it, or the tool of your choice. We want to turn the printer on, and the switch is in the back. The USB port is also in the back. So, we're going to touch this first button. Then we're going to touch the one in the upper left that says Manual. Now we're going to press the Home button. And what it's going to do is it's going to move the print head to the home position. That's why we want to make sure this is loose, and the print head can move up and down and wobble around freely. Because if it's tight, or it's binding, it could damage the, the bottom of the vat. It could even damage the LCD screen, and we don't want to do that. So, making sure that this can move, we press home. And it might be a good idea to check it one more time. So, as we're waiting for that to go all the way down, it'll beep, and then it will raise back up, and then it will lower again. Okay, that is now in the home position. So now what we want to do is we want to just gently press down the print head so that it's flat against the bottom of the vat. And now we're going to tighten these four screws. And once we get those tight, and you don't need to tighten them a lot. I mean, you want them a little past snug, but you don't got a reef on them now. We're going to tighten them up. And once we get these snugged up, our print head is aligned. So with the print head aligned, we are going to tap the up arrow on it. Do not tap down. We're going to tap the up arrow. It's set to move up 10 millimeters at a time. We just want to move it up enough so that we can pour resin in it and it'll get under the head. So I'm just going to hit it two or three times, maybe four, because I can. I've got my resin here. I'm going to shake my resin up. Always shake your resin up. And when that moves up, I'm going to pour resin in the tank. We'll put the card in and we'll start our first print. I think the first print I'm going to do is that dragon on that comes on the USB stick that they have pre-supported and pre-sliced. So let's take a quick look at the contents of the USB stick that comes with the printer. 
First thing you'll notice is we have five pre-sliced, pre-supported files that we can just plug this stick into the printer and start printing. We have a little video here to help you get started with it. We have a beta version of the slicer software called ChidoBox. We have a folder with user manuals for both the printer and ChidoBox. And I guess the same thing in Chinese. We have the slicing software. We have, and the slicing software comes in both Windows, Mac, and Linux versions. We also have a profile set up for us, ready to go for the, the, the slicer. Plus, we have a PDF showing us how to install it, which is really nice. And it's not hard to install the profile into ChidoBox at all. Then we have the same thing again in Chinese, I guess. Then we have some test models for us to play with. Now, these are not pre-supported or pre-sliced, so you will need to put these into Chidu Box and play with them in that and slice them and get them ready for the printer. We have more test models. This has Chinese characters after it. Not sure what's up with that. And um, that's pretty much the contents of the USB stick, and it's all you really need. So let's take a quick look at our menu options. When we turn the printer on, we have Tools, System, and Print. When we tap Tools, we have Manual in the upper left. This allows us to manually control the height of the head and home it. Then we have Exposure Test, which does exactly what it says. It allows us to test the LCD curing lamp. Then we have set Z to zero. The manual calls this a useless parameter and basically all we can do is confirm that it's there. It doesn't really seem to do anything. We have an emergency stop button. We have a clean raw material button which allows us to fully cure whatever happens to be left in the vat. Then we have a back button under system. We have about which shows us the version numbers and allows us to turn the beep on and off. We have TPA adjust, which lets us adjust or calibrate the touch screen. And then we have languages, and you can see the different language options we have. And then we have a network button, which is ghosted, and on mine doesn't do anything. We have a button called after sale support, which has a website, a telephone number, and then a QR code, I'm guessing for their Facebook page. And then we have a back button, and then we have the print button. The print button lets us select a print we want to do, and we tap up and down, and we can see the different things on the card. We can tap one, and we can start a print. We can also throw it away or go back, and if it's actually printing, we can pause it or stop it from this screen as well. And that's pretty much what our front panel menu system is. Print head moved up. I have poured resin in our vat. And there is a max line on inside the reservoir. Do not put resin in over the max line. Because remember, the head has to submerge in it. And if you fill it up too far, when the head submerges, it'll overflow it. And that would be a mess to clean up. So I am going to tap print. I am going to find their snake dragon that's pre-supported. That's this one right here. And shows you a, a little representation of it. Don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it shows you a small picture of what you're about to print. Then we're going to print, hit the print button and away it goes. I will speed this first one up so you can kind of watch the process. After that, I'm not going to show it to you because once you've seen one, you've pretty much seen them all. Let's get it off of there and see what it looks like.
since this is water washable resin we're just going into my little cleaning solution of just pure water now that it's washed off a bit i'm just going to take a bunch of the um support off of it and it should all just pull off pretty easily now we will just put it under the curing light so here is the finished print it's looking really good i'm just going to set it to one side right now I've got several others I'm going to print, and then at the end we'll come back and take a closer look at all of them. This print here is a Mandalorian figurine I got pre-supported from MyMiniFactory.com. And all I did was load it into Chinu Box, hit the slice button on it, and brought it over and printed it. I'm going to get it off of there, and we are going to clean it up and cure it and take a look at it. Let's take a look at the prints I got off the Gitech Alcade printer with the Gitech water washable black resin. Now you're asking yourself why there are some duplicates and why there are eight prints. Well, that's because this is the second version of this review video I made. The first version I made out in my workshop on my old workbench, and while I really liked it, Gitech didn't care for it. They didn't like the old workbench or the fact it was in my workshop. And they asked me if I could edit all that out, and I have no idea how to do that. So I just told them I'd make a second video, and this is it. My findings are identical. So let's take a look at these prints. The two snakes look almost identical. They both turned out just really, really nice. Every print I made off of this printer turned out really nice. And I have no issues with these prints at all. So very happy with those. The detail, tiny detail on it's really good. I didn't have a single failure of any kind with this printer. It functioned right out of the box really well. This is the only one here that I had some issues with. And I think the issues were my fault. You'll see the white markings in them. And I think this was my fault. I think I got it too close to the UV lights I have for that drying that little fingernail dryer thing I have, the UV lights in that are very powerful. And I have gotten too much on them before, and I have burned more than one print with it. So I think that's my fault. Other than that, the print turned out pretty nice. This print was part of the first review, and it also turned out very nice. This one is not terribly detailed, so probably not the best print to show off a printer. The two Mandalorians, the first one, the one where I broke his barrel of his rifle and the barrel of his pistol that um that was part of the first review i dropped him i actually broke his leg off as well as both guns but um nonetheless it turned out good this second one really turned out super nice i spent a lot more time washing it and getting off the support without breaking anything and so far i have managed not to drop it which um is a pretty a pretty big thing for me but very pleased with that one i think this one's a keeper this was part of the original video as well and i thought that turned out really nice with a lot of a lot of small detail that looks really good so very pleased with that one as well now this one here this is something else i got off my mini factory and um sliced and supported in chidu box i will want to say one thing the automatic supports in Chidu Box have gotten a lot better than it, they, it used to be. So I was kind of 
impressed with how the auto well the automatic supports work. This turned out really well. I really love how how um thin the resin in the wings and the skirt are, and that you can see right through both of them. Very impressive. The tiny detail turned out really good. Really impressed with this particular print. I'd like to experiment more with these ones that have very, very thin sheets of resin in them that are actually transparent. Really, really nice. Really like this print. I also want to take a quick note here of the Gitech water washable resin. One of the reasons I always hated resin printing in the past was the resin itself. It stunk to high heaven. It was toxic. You had to use chemicals to wash it. It really just made the whole thing miserable for me. But this particular resin doesn't smell that bad. I mean, it still has a smell, but it's much more subdued than the old type of resin. And you don't need the chemicals. You can just take the entire print head off the printer and carry it to the sink and wash it all off in the sink. That took a lot of the misery out of three out of resin printing for me and actually has made it kind of fun. And of course, the fact that the Alcade printer worked right out of the box without a lot of failures and tweaking and more failures and more tweaking, that also made it fun too. So after two reviews, eight prints, and almost an entire bottle of resin, what are my thoughts on the Gitech Alcade Resin 3D Printer? Well, I have to say that it worked really well, and it worked really well right out of the box. I had no issues with it whatsoever. The memory stick came with everything you need to get started. Slicer, configuration, prints, manual, it came with everything you need. So if you're looking for a small, inexpensive, entry-level resin printer, whether you're making jewelry, whether you're printing tabletop figurines, whether you just want to have fun, or maybe you're prototyping small parts, I think this would be an excellent choice. I want to thank Gitech for sending this out. I want to thank you guys for watching my videos, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye for now.